Welcome back to Thumb FPV. Today we are going over the Shendrone's thick build. We have our bottom plate here with our PDBs, our capacitor is on, our XT60 is in the bottom right here. Um, I have skipped ahead, uh, minor step, went ahead and I have depinned the wire harness here. This was all together to attach the flight controller to an ESC. Uh, there are pads on here, literally uh, signal 1 is there, signal 2, signal 3, signal 4. Over here to the side, mine is right under the um, boot button, we have signal 5, signal 6, signal 7, and signal 8. Now, I was just going to go ahead and use this, but unlike the last build I did where the PDBs had signal out, pads on them these ones do not I also didn't find it uh, very beneficial to run half of the signal wires out from the mini JXT plug here on the side to the ESC's and then run the rest of them out I decided that simply I was going to solder them all up straight to the board that way they all have a nice solid connection So from that point, I've taken and I have hooked this up, VBAT, this is 12 volt right here, to power the flight controller. Plug in nice and easy right there. Take a battery, check this out. Boom, good to go there. Um, if you are watching any of my builds, <laughs> I have decided after the hex build, especially this one being an octave copter, to not go ahead and switch the flight controller orientation around. <laughs> I had quite a little bit of um, problem with that on the last one. I mean, it was manageable. We figured it out, but it was it was kind of a uh, kind of threw me off. So there we go. We have our power wire running straight from the flight controller right down to the power distribution board and the next thing is I'm simply going to go ahead and I'm going to tin all of the signal pads okay so I know I said I was just going to tin up the signal pads and I did but I thought while I was at it I might as well go ahead and do up the rest of the stuff except for the fact that I forgot one pad Now it's complete. So what we have here, we have VBAT and ground for our air unit. We have our TX here for our white wire off the air unit. We have our RX for our gray wire off the air unit. Here is our signal one. We have our ground for the video ground. We have our R2 here for the yellow, which is the S bus, our signal 3, signal 8, signal 7, signal 6, signal 5, signal 4, and signal two, or signal 4 and signal 2 over there. So we are all set. So again we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, S bus, video ground, TX, RX ground and VBAT all ready to go okay so at this point in time like literally the drone is as far as I'm concerned half built all we have to do is attach the ESC's the air unit and the motors that may seem like a lot but it's really not so here we go <laughs> all of the ESC's reported for this bam what we're working with here these are I remember the Hack RC BL Heli 32 35 amp 2 to 5 ESCs right here. There we go. I did try to kind of follow the build for the most part. That was impossible, like I have stated, uh, ever since this build was released. 
half of the components for it minus you know one or two here and there have literally become obsolete because it became super popular so what i'm going to do i'm going to show you something real quick um is i'm going to take this pin out here what i want to do i was trying to figure if i wanted to have the escs out here at, towards the end of the arm inside and for the thickness of them, they're not really all that wide. Well, the width of them, they're not all that wide. And the arm is pretty thick. And it does kind of cover it this way. But you can also put them on here this way. That way, if a prop comes down, not trying to jinx myself and preemptively crash this thing, because that is not in my intentions. But I think I'm going to put everything on the side of it and then run it back up into the flight controller from there that way all the wires can stay out of the way and you have the top of the arm it looks nice and clean and open and it's not cluttered all over the place so that's how I'm going to do that um, to do this I have decided that I'm going to take in roughly right off of the edge here I'm going to measure out about an inch and a quarter past the third standoff bolt right here for the arm and I don't have a tape measure, but I know a little bit about math. So uh, 30 millimeters is roughly 1.8 inches or something like that. So if you add the couple extra millimeters to the outside of the holes, should put it roughly right up around 32, 33, which should give you an inch and a half. So I'm just going to take to measure this, and I'm going to line that up with there, and I'm going to run the wires out to the end of the flight controller and cut them from there. So before I start soldering here, I want to make sure that everything is nice and you know, conformed, just measured right out. So what I'm going to do for this point in time, I'm actually going to take and reconnect the arms, and then I'm going to line up the ESCs to an even length the whole way around side by side and put a light zip tie around them to hold them in place bring them in just a little bit to make sure that the wires are all as flush yet as tight as can be that way everything is nice and tight and there's not a whole bunch of loose wires hanging out all over the place that's all handled and settled now we got our ESC's soldered on There we go. Shrink wrap to hold them in place. All four of them. Yeah, the original screws for the legs in here holding this in place. That way it's not so hard to throw out the bottom plate on when I'm done. Um, so with this kind of quadcopter here, well, octocopter, um, the way that it is set up, I did actually look <laughs> before I started messing with stuff uh, this time in beta flight is the motors go and we'll start from the top one two three four and then to the bottom is five six seven eight so that's the way that they are going to be set up uh, the top spins the conventional way with the front motors in and the back ones out and then the bottom ones spin the opposite way I thought they would spin the same way but they don't so we have this all done now literally all you got to do is just take and hook up the flight controller and I'm going to do that right now we're literally just moving right along on this thing today so what we have here the way I have this configured I figured it would be the easiest way being as there's a top and a bottom motor um, I have the top ESC's to the front of the arms so this is ESC 1 ESC 2 ESC 3 ESC 4 then to the back I have 5 6 7 8 so wired up on the board we have signal 1, signal 2, signal 3, signal 4, signal 5, 6, 7, and 8. Everything is right on point, ready to go. Everything is the way that it's supposed to be. 
So just minus a couple of things right here, this guy is pretty much like 80% built. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm going to fit up where I want the air unit on it and run the wiring for that. So in the event of doing this, I am um, reusing some components here. Uh, this air unit is off of my HGLRC Sector 5, which the frame on that, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. It was horrible. I cannot seem to keep it together. Um, pieces broke. The TPU on it was junk. Everything just, the It was pretty cheaply made in my opinion. But one thing I noticed, the point of this I'm getting to is the wire harness that it came with is not the conventional wire harness that you would get with an air unit fresh out of the box. It was weirdly colored. Um, if you ever happen to come across one of these, there we go, um, it'll start off normal. You get your V-bat, your ground, but then it goes white, yellow, green, purple. That's actually supposed to be white, gray, brown, and yellow in that exact order from the top down. So I'm just pointing that out real quick. This is a, a reused unit that I'm putting on here. Let me get these wires soldered up real quick. Okay, so here we go. We have our S bus, our yellow, our brown, our video ground, our TX right here, with the white. We have our RX there. We have our ground and our V bat all hooked up to the air unit. I took and put two pieces, two sided tape fit really nicely. I actually just cut an inch piece and then cut it diagonally across the sides, put it right in there. Fits nice and neat right underneath the air unit. Minimal tension on the wires, even left to length from the original drone. So everything should be good. And get that set up there, run a zip tie around, and get the mount for the camera put in place. And here we are. This is pretty much 95% of the drone complete. Um, obviously, there is a little bit of the frame that needs to be added onto it. We need the underplate here, as well as the legs and this monstrosity for whatever camera it is that you decide to put on the top. Um, but we are going to wrap this up for today. We have the air unit camera mounted. We have the um, air unit mounted with the two-sided tape underneath of it secured with a zip tie. Uh, we have our wires ran. We have all of our ESCs hooked up, ran to the power board, and our signal wires have all been ran to the flight controller. So that's it for today. Hope you guys like this. I will have the finishing video for this up hopefully this weekend. All things permitted. Sometimes things happen. So if I can't, don't hold it to me. But, you know, <laughs> we do what we can. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. This is Thumb FPV. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.